All right, everybody, this is Ross, the fig boss. In today's video, we're going to talk about the Breba crop. We did do a video quite recently about my first figs of the year. We talked briefly at that video in that video about Brebas. We, we tasted a couple of varieties, a little Ruby. Uh, we had Jiwale Noir. Um, since then, I've done some cooking inside. I got to taste other varieties like Dotato. Uh, we tasted Sister Madeline's uh, Yellow, and also a variety called Salato. Today I have a variety here called um, Negra de Agde, which I've already harvested, cut in half. And also I have another Dotado Breba that's a bit more ripe. We're going to get a lot of rain coming in here today. So there's a flood watch, probably in the next hour, believe it or not. It's going to rain roughly an inch in a very short amount of time. That's enough to really destroy many fruits, not just figs, but I went ahead and picked a lot of my peaches because of that. As these fruits are expanding, the more that contributes to that expansion, the faster that goes, the more they expand, the quicker and easier they split or crack. And that's just not good. Additionally, when it rains, the skin seems to absorb, the synconium of the fig seems to absorb a lot of that rain. So it's not ideal. It ruins, really ruins the fruits. I'd rather pick them just a little bit early and eat them and enjoy them or cook them while they, they still have a lot of their structure. Uh, and in other videos, as I said, in that, that video we did a, a couple weeks ago, is that we talked a little bit about Brebas and we mentioned that really Brebas are not really my thing. I don't usually go for varieties that have Breba or I tend to remove the Breba if Brebas are present. And the reason for that is it really slows down the main crop. The main crop almost always is of a better quality, but I had a Breba yesterday that was mind-blowingly good from Little Ruby. It was an 8.5 out of 10. You could say it was a 3.5 out of 5 or 4 out of 5, something like that. It's re it was really, really special. Um, and I had given it to a person actually half of it to a person that had never tried a fresh fig before and they were mine their mind was blown they absolutely fell in love um and i don't blame them i don't know how you couldn't fall in love out of all the fruits we went around and tried a whole bunch of fruits and different things and uh it was clearly their favorite it, it, it was the best fruit it, i mean that's obviously my opinion and that person's opinion but i think objectively it is the probably the highest quality fruit that I had available at the time. Um, and figs, I think, are just wonderful. So the point is, though, is that we don't really get a great Breba crop, or I remove it, or the, the Brebas that tend to fall off the tree. So, but this year we've had such a great Breba crop that I've been kind of rethinking some things. Um, Namely, because the temperatures in the soil, when they fluctuate so much in the spring, which is when this Breba crop forms, uh, those fluctuations in soil temperature really change the metabolism of our trees very quickly. And that sap flow, it just isn't very strong. If it's, maybe we have a nice day in the 60s, or maybe 70, if we get lucky in the spring. Um, at some point at night, it could drop down to 40. And those really cold temperatures at night, those fluctuations really make the sap flow and the metabolisms of these trees change. Um, and it's just unfortunate because then they just fall off. The brebas fall off the trees. This particular variety, I believe I had it, had given it a greenhouse head start. So that's partly why this breba even ripened, I imagine. Um, and why maybe I've had such a better season is that a lot of the potted trees were in the greenhouse um, and the combination of a very mild spring that didn't have crazy fluctuations in temperature. We didn't have crazy fluctuations in rain like we're having right now where it's gonna rain an inch in three hours. So we've had a good year. And as I said, I'm trying to rethink things. So let me try this particular Breba, the Dotato. We'll see if uh, I'm really starting to enjoy these Brebas more, especially considering I have a fig behind me called Campaneri, which I did give a greenhouse head start. 
Not that I didn't give some of these Breva producers a head start. But the main crop there is going to ripen in about a week, probably less than a week, maybe five or six days. Um, and that's really not that much further behind. It's really roughly about two weeks behind my first Bravas. Um, but the rootstock is back. And the rootstock is Desert King, I've realized from my records. And uh, I'd actually really wanted a Desert King. <laughs> I was debating whether or not I wanted one because we've had such a great year for Brabas this year. And I think in the future, what I would like to do is plant a Desert King in the ground at my future property. And we'll actually go through and uh, wrap it every year and then get a pretty good Braba crop, hopefully off these in-ground trees. I think, honestly, guys, it's just better if you have a Braba producer in this climate. The reason why we struggle so much with them, as this little ruby actually put out four Braba this year, which is fantastic. We had very, we had no dieback whatsoever from the winter which is enabling the, the in-ground trees to actually produce Braba. But the, the potted trees typically are more subjected to these, these big temperature swings in the soil. The soil can very easily heat up very quickly and also cool down very quickly in the spring. And then when that happens, you just have a problem where the Brabas tend to reject their fruits or they tend to fall off. The trees reject the Brabas. And it happens very often in the spring here for a lot of growers, it's not just me. People in this area tend to really struggle with trees that have potted Braba. Maybe there's you know, something else going on, but I think that has a lot to do with it. This year we saw very little spring temperature fluctuations and therefore all of my trees ripened their Braba. There wasn't a single tree who ended up dropping some fruits. Here's actually another one right here that uh, this is given to me from a friend. This is the bonsai tree, one of the bonsai trees. The other one I've realized is a dotado. It ripens three or four Braba. And I realized it's producing doubles and very few varieties actually produce doubles. Actually, here's another Braba down here. I didn't even notice that, but you can see there's a, there's a nice dotado Braba. The leaf pattern matches exactly these spades or three lobed leaves with the serrated edges to them and it produces doubles which is a very common characteristic of uh, dotado um, i'll have to show it to you on the other side i guess but the point is is i think um you know maybe not all trees will do this drop their braba but historically i've had many brabas over the years and i know a lot of people who grow them in containers and we just don't succeed they end up falling off and it really is the change in that temperature especially from the daytime to the nighttime temperature is really what happens i think um and then you come out here in the morning and they're kind of just all of a sudden falling off the trees and it's not a lack of water i mean it's maybe it's you know the lack of uh maybe a stronger tree or something uh but i'll say i'll tell you this that growing them in the ground, you just don't have nearly as many of those temperature swings because the ground is a more stable temperature versus the soil in these pots. So therefore you should have very, um, a lot less of that dropping in theory. Uh, so we'll find out, you know, in the future at some point here, uh, we will determine if this Desert King can uh, hold on to its Brave. I, I was very interested. There is a, some talk that's been around about a Desert King that doesn't need pollination, that actually ripens its main, its main crop, excuse me, without pollination. If that exists and we can find out, I know a friend of mine was pollinating his tree, but if you can have a Desert King that doesn't need pollination and will ripen the main crop, through some weird thing that has happened, I would much rather have that. I would, I would love to grow Desert King for its main crop. It's a really great tasting fig and it's very thick and jammy. So a lot of people don't give it enough credit, I think. It really is one of the best figs in so many places. So.